OK, now we're going to prove this theorem that I stated about the representations of U1. So we want to prove that any representation is a direct sum R1 plus dot 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 plus Rn of these one dimensional representations that just send e to the i theta to a one by one matrix e to the i mk theta for some integer mk. So we're in luck because we can apply the theorem about complete reducibility to these guys. So remember this theorem said if our, if our representation admits an invariant Hermitian in a product, then it splits as a direct sum of irreducible subrepresentations. So the first thing I need to do is to show that applies. Uh, so any representation of U1 admits an invariant Hermitian inner product. That's the first goal. Second goal, well, um, that will tell us that we split up as a direct sum of irreducible representations. So the second goal will be classify the irreducible representations. And there the lemma will be um, any irreducible representation of U1 is um, one dimensional and it's precisely given by R of e to the i theta equals the one by one matrix e to the i m theta for some integer. Okay, so the first lemma is basically something called the Unitarian trick for producing this uh, invariant in a product. And the second lemma is called Schur's lemma, or it's related to Schur's lemma. Maybe I should say it's a corollary of Schur's lemma. Okay, so these two lemmas together, lemma one, lemma two, imply the theorem. So let's prove lemma one first. The idea will be to take any inner product, any Hermitian inner product, like the standard one on CN, uh, and average it over the group. In the following sense, in other words, I'm going to produce a new inner product, U inner product V, and I'd better distinguish this from the other inner product. I'm going to do that by writing a subscript inv, because it's going to be invariant. Uh, this is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the old inner product between r e to the i theta applied to u and r e to the i theta applied to v. And this, is integra this integral is happening over d theta, and there's also 1 over 2 pi factor there. So the 1 over 2 pi is nothing to worry about. That's just there because if I start with an invariant in a product and then I integrate from zero to two pi, the thing inside the integrand is not changing if, if it's already invariant, right? The, you can just take out these r e to the i thetas and then I just pick up a factor of two pi that I don't want. So that's why the one over two pi is there. It doesn't need to be there. Okay, so I'm not going to prove that this formula gives you a Hermitian inner product. That's easy. You can check that by verifying the axioms. The interesting bit is proving it's invariant. So I'll, I'll show you that. Uh, so what I need to prove is that if r e to the i phi of u in a product with r e to the i phi of v is computed, then it gives us the same thing as u in a product v with respect to this invariant in a product. Uh, so let's compute it. This is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the old inner product of r e to the i theta applied to r 
e to the i phi u. Uh, u should be outside the brackets. And that in brackets with uh, r e to the i theta r e to the i phi applied to v d theta over 2 pi. And now r is a representation, so I can stick all this stuff together and get r e to the i theta plus phi in both of these terms. So what I'm left with is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the old inner product of r e to the i theta plus phi u and r e to the i theta plus phi v d theta over 2 pi. Okay, and this looks a lot like the formula we have for the inv inner product, uh, except that we've got a theta plus phi instead of a theta inside the exponentials. But I can get rid of that by changing variables. So I'm going to define theta prime to be theta plus phi. And now what's inside the integral can be changed to um, e to the i theta prime in both of these terms. And I just have to worry about the uh, d theta. Well, d theta prime equals d theta plus d phi. Phi is just some fixed number, right? E to the i phi is just some fixed element of the group that I'm applying to both of these arguments. So it's just constant. So d theta prime equals d theta. And now looking at this formula and the original formula, you see that they're exactly the same, except that theta is now called theta prime. It's just a dummy integration variable, so it doesn't matter. So this equals u inner product with v with respect to this invariant inner product. So that shows that this new inner product defined by this integration formula is invariant. So I'll just remark this works more generally for any compact group, compact group of matrices. In other words, um, if you have a topologically closed matrix group and all the matrix entries are bounded, so you never, you don't have a sequence of matrices whose entries get bigger and bigger and bigger, you can define a similar kind of integral and uh, the Hermitian inner product it gives you is a finite, uh, you know, it's not sort of infinite valued. Uh, so I'm not going to prove this. Um, you can maybe do a project about it if you want. Uh, the relevant thing is called the Ha measure, or the Ha integral. But it would take us uh, too long to explain this for any compact group G. Okay, so that at least tells us that any representation of U1 splits as a direct sum of irreducibles. And we need to classify the irreducibles now. Okay, so let's prove lemma two. Um, so the trick will be um, fix uh, an e to the i theta in the group U1 and consider the matrix R of e to the i theta in GLNC. So because C is an algebraically, algebraically closed field, the characteristic polynomial of this matrix has a root, which means that this matrix has an eigenvalue and a corresponding eigenspace that's not zero. So R e to the i theta has at least one eigenvalue lambda and v lambda, the eigenspace, which is the set of vectors v such that r e to the i theta v equals lambda v, is not the zero space. So this is because we're working over c, as I say. If, if you're working over a non-algebraically closed field, this wouldn't work. So the first claim is that v lambda is a sub-representation. 
cn. In other words, if you start with an eigenvector and you apply some other element of the group, you end up with another eigenvector. So let e to the i theta be another element of the group, sorry, e to the i phi, and let's apply it to v, where v is in v lambda. I want to show that this thing is also in v lambda, so I'm going to apply r e to the i theta to it. What do I get? Well, because u1 is an abelian group, and because uh, this is a representation, this matrix e to the i theta, uh, sorry, r e to the i theta and r e to the i phi can meet with one another. So r e to the i theta, r equal to the i phi equals r e to the i phi, r e to the i theta applied to v. r e to the i theta applied to v is lambda v, and this is a linear map, so I can take the lambda out the front, and I get lambda r e to the i phi v. So let's just look at what that's telling us. It's telling us that r e to the i theta applied to this vector, r e to the i phi v, equals lambda times this vector. So this vector is again in the eigenspace. r e to the i phi v is in v lambda. So remember, these are the eigenspaces of r e to the i theta, and they're preserved by r e to the i phi for all phi. So that's telling us that the eigenspace is a subrepresentation. So if Cn is an irreducible representation, then this is telling us that actually it's equal to V lambda because you know V lambda is a subrepresentation and it's not zero, so it has to be everything. Because remember, irreducible means you have no proper subrepresentations. Okay, so that's telling us that r e to the i theta is lambda times the identity matrix because everything is an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda. So now I fixed the theta at the beginning of this proof, but you know this formula works for any theta as long as lambda depends on theta. So, i.e., we get a map lambda from u1 to the non-zero complex numbers, because lambda has to be non-zero, because it's an invertible matrix, uh, such that uh, r of e to the i theta equals lambda of theta times the identity. Next claim is that lambda of theta is a unit complex number. And the proof goes as follows. We have this invariant Hermitian inner product. So r e to the i theta of v inner product with itself should be equal to v inner product with itself. But it's actually equal to lambda of theta v inner product with itself. And lambda is just a number, just a scalar. So I can pull out both of these lambdas. The first one will pick up a bar, complex conjugate. So I end up with absolute value of lambda of theta squared times v in a product v. So comparing these two, we get that absolute value of lambda has to be equal to one. Which tells us lambda is a unit complex number. And you know, looking at this, lambda is a map from u1 to c star. It lands in the unit complex numbers. It's a homomorphism from u1 to u1. And we've classified those guys, those smooth homomorphisms from u1 to u1. It's precisely something of the form lambda of theta equals e to the i m theta for some m integer. So this tells us that r e to the i theta is a diagonal matrix with e to the i m thetas on the diagonal. And remember, one of the assumptions of our lemma was that it was an irreducible representation. Well, 
that tells us it actually has to be one dimensional. So the dimension of our representation has to be one uh, because any complex line in Cn is preserved by you know, multiplication by e to the i epi theta, so is, is therefore a subrepresentation. So because c to the n is supposed to be irreducible, you know, c to the n is equal to c. It's not supposed to have any proper subrepresentations. Okay, and that exactly classifies for us the irreducible representations. Look at this lemma, any rep irreducible representation is one dimensional, that's one complex dimensional, and it sends e to the i theta to the one by one matrix e to the i m theta. Okay, so that completes the classification of all representations of U1, they're just direct sums of these very simple one dimensional representations.